Looking back at the days while I was at school, I'll tell you that there are so many things I wish I would have known before and while I was studying architecture. I made a list of all the things and picked the top ones for this video. These are the top 5 things I wish I would have known when I was in school and hopefully they can help you guys on your path toward becoming successful architects. For starters, I wish I would have saved my work from the beginning. I started really focusing on saving my schoolwork after my third year. Pretty much everything I did in my first two years, I would look back and consider it junk. So naturally, I would throw it out. I never even photographed those things. I also would save all my semester work on a single USB. And after a few semesters, my USB would break or get lost. So I don't have anything to show for from my first few design classes except for some images here and there. You, on the other hand, have to make it a habit to save every single piece of work you do. When you sketch in your sketchbook, make a copy of it. If you make any cool diagrams, whether made by hand or using Photoshop, save a copy of that too. Always try to save PDF versions of your model as you go along so that at the end you can see how your project has changed, how it went from nothing to a complete project. The trick is to save literally everything that you ever do. Notes, sketches, diagrams, renders, site visits, I mean everything. This is great for three reasons. Number one, it's cool to see where you came from, how you've evolved through the years at school. Number two, sometimes looking back actually inspires you to create something better. When it's time to make your portfolios, you'll have so many elements to choose from, and that's the third reason. Sometimes you'll even end up using things you used to think were trash. Speaking of trash, never throw anything away without properly scanning or photographing it. No matter how bad you think it is, trust me, you'll thank me later. I'll have an in-depth video on this topic soon, but basically what you want to do is create one folder on your computer called architecture. Within that folder, you'll open up a new set of folders, one for each semester. You can even organize them by year if you prefer. Within these folders, you're going to organize all the work you do in a way that will help you access it quickly in the future. Pro tip, use Google Drive so that if your computer crashes, you won't lose a thing. I used to spend a lot of time designing the exterior of the building because it's what I learned to obsess over. When finals came around, I would have an interesting exterior, but all my plans and renders and interiors would suffer greatly. Each semester, I would run out of time and was never really able to focus on the overall experience of the project. I wish I would have balanced out each project so that I could offer my attention to the whole project as equally as possible. Whenever a semester starts, we always tend to get excited with all the possibilities involving our design. There's nothing wrong with this. Actually, I encourage everyone to be excited and aspire to create amazing designs. The problem is that sometimes we get caught up on the design so much that we end the semester with a cool looking building that's empty inside. Instead, we have to think about the process backwards. What I mean by this is that when you start designing, before you start designing, picture what you would like your final product to look like. I don't mean the exterior of the building, I mean overall. Do you want really complete rendered plans? Do you want a complex physical model? Do you want your renderings to be ultra realistic? The problem with focusing too much on the design is that you forget about the rest of your project. Instead, I suggest that at the beginning of each semester, you take some time to create a detailed list of what you want to be included in your final. Then start to create a schedule with small deadlines that reflect your goals. That way, you know when you have to stop and move on to the next phase, and that way your project will really impress everyone at the end. I remember that most of my time in school was spent on designing or doing work for my other architecture classes. I really wanted to learn more about the field of architecture, I wanted to know more about how buildings are put together or about the logistics of an office, but I always told myself I was too busy or that school would eventually teach me. Wrong. The truth is, that was a really bad excuse. If I would have just read a few pages about the stuff they weren't teaching me every single day, it would have made a huge difference today. Instead, I would tell myself that I would wait for the semester to be over before dividing my time further. Big mistake. You should learn about the other aspects of architecture that are not really taught in school. I'm talking about all the stuff that most of you would probably consider boring. Things like what contracts need to be signed during the development of a building, or how to manage a firm. Things like marketing and how it affects architecture and the building, or the different phases that go into a project. These are very important things that will affect you when you start working, and you don't want to be learning about them on the job. So I'm going to give you a little advice. Purchase the book called The Architect's Handbook from the AIA as a reference book. Now, before you go buy that, let me explain. 
This book is for business elements exclusive to the United States. A lot of information within the book will be different if you're going to be practicing architecture in other countries. Still, I highly recommend this book as a reference book because it goes into a lot of detail about the architectural conversation that you won't have in school. And although it will not help you in other countries, it will start to expand your knowledge on architecture. If you do decide to purchase this book, you don't need to get the latest version. Find an older one and use it as a reference. You could also look into the material that is required to become licensed in your country and purchase that instead. Read at least 10 pages every day so that by the time you graduate, you'll be so much further ahead. Also, if you're in the States, you can use some of the information you learn from the book on your test if and when you decide to get licensed. I started working before I started going to school. I never really knew how to save money. I always thought that saving money was for people who made a lot of it. So I would go around spending a few dollars here, a few dollars there, and I never focused on saving. By the time I was in the middle of my career, I was already in debt from all the loans I had to take out. And the job that I had was paying for the interest on that debt. I thought that I definitely couldn't save money now, but one day I would. The truth is that there's no perfect time or perfect amount of money you should save. Every bit helps and you should start right now. What I wish I would have done was to figure out a way to avoid spending a few dollars every day, even a few cents, and save them instead. Outside of paying for your classes, architecture is super expensive. You're going to need to spend a lot of money on materials to build your models. Many times you'll be asked to purchase books, videos, or even software. Sometimes your laptop will break and you'll need to fix it or purchase a new one. Long days in studios will mean that you'll have to spend some money on food or beverages that you didn't plan on purchasing. Eventually, you might decide to get licensed, and that means more study material and extra money to pay for testing. But all of this does not mean that you can't or should not save money. The point is that you should save as much money as possible. Now, as you're watching this, you're probably coming up with excuses as to why you can't save money. Maybe you're not working right now, or maybe you have too many bills. I totally get you. I've been there. But that still doesn't mean you can't save money. Look, this is not a financial channel. I don't expect you guys to take financial advice from me, but something that did help me when I was in school and still helps me today is an app called Digit. This app works by studying your bank account and removing a small amount of change on days where you don't usually spend much. If you install it now, you won't notice it's there and might be able to save a few thousand dollars faster than you thought possible. As with everything, research it first, see what others are saying about it. If you decide to download it and want to help my channel out, use the referral code or follow the link in the description. I also highly suggest you follow podcasts or YouTube channels that talk about personal finance because it truly is one of the most important things in life that can help you reach just about any goal you may have, including becoming a successful architect. If you are already listening to podcasts or watching YouTube channels that talk about personal finance, feel free to leave a comment with that channel so that others can follow those channels too. Finally, I wish I would have joined competitions while I was at school. In my mind, I thought I wasn't going to win or I wasn't going to have time to take the competition seriously. This is 100% nonsense. First of all, there's so many competitions available. I could have either picked ones that were really simple or ones where I would be able to use my own semester project to participate. The reason this is so important to me is because by not joining those competitions, I missed a lot of opportunities. Some competitions allow you to travel to other parts of the world if you win to give a lecture on your project. How cool is that? Some competitions will feature the winner in their magazine. There are just so many possibilities and unfortunately, I miss them all. You should avoid making the mistake I made and head over to Arc Daily and Design. I'll include the links in the description. Here, you'll find lots of competitions. Feel free to browse through them often as they are constantly updating them. If you're at the beginning of the semester, talk to your professor about basing the semester project on one of the competitions. Keep in mind that there is usually a fee involved with entering these competitions. The earlier you join, the smaller the fee will be. If you're lucky, you might win a few and make your money back. But the goal is not the money. The goal is to have as many competitions under your belt as possible by the time you graduate so that you can use some of these in your portfolio. When you guys join a competition, come back and leave a comment about it. I'd love to hear about your experience. As always, thank you guys for watching, liking my videos, subscribing, and leaving comments. It's been getting tougher nowadays to answer every single comment like I used to, but believe me, I'm trying my best. 
I've been seeing a lot of great comments and a lot of great questions, so keep sending them over and I'll keep trying to get to all of them. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you guys down in the comments.